I'm Kelly Carter, and this is another act. Four-time NBA champion John Sally may be known for his skills on the basketball court, but the actor and advocate has showcased his acting chops in blockbuster films, including Bad Boys alongside big talents like Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. From his own late night talk show to becoming an advocate for the benefits of a vegan lifestyle, Sally remains visible long after his NBA career was over. The Brooklyn native is currently starring in the Disney Plus musical, Sneakerella, a sneaker tycoon, Darius King. Kira, mm -hmm. if you find a designer that we should consider, someone that speaks to you, tells a story, and has the experience to back it up, we'll try it out. Please welcome John Sally to the show. NBA champion, actor, talk show host, and so much more. John Sally, where did your journey from the hardwood to Hollywood first begin? It, it began when I was 12 years old. I used to look this way, and my mother would be like, if you look from the top of our building, you can see Manhattan. I said, if you look further, you can see Beverly Hills. So my mentality when I would watch television was the Beverly Hillbillies. If they can get there just by finding gold from hunting, I know I can get on television. And I really wanted to be. So yeah. I know my path was sports will get you out of the neighborhood get you a scholarship, you don't have to pay for college, and if you do well in college, then you be in the pros, and then if you're in the pros, everyone's gonna love you, and then you can go to Hollywood, like O.J. Simpson, like The Hammer, like Jim Brown. Yeah. I, and I wanted to do that. And then when I saw Kareem in um, Return of the Dragon, I was like, I can be in these movies. Jim yeah. Brown really pushed it to the point where I knew I could do it. Were you keeping that a secret when you were in college or were you secretly looking at scripts or what was that like for you? Because a lot of times we really don't allow athletes to do more than just their athletic prowess. It's funny you put it that we don't allow athletes to do something. You understand what you mean? I, I understood what you mean by that, but just the thought that people say, you are going to be in this box and that's it. And yeah. the mentality that athletes were dumb. I, I mean, I graduated from Georgia Tech. And I, I remember going, picking the schools. I said, I don't want to go to any school that when I get out and I show my degree, you're going to wonder if I skated through. There's no skating through Georgia Tech. Let me just tell you that, let's start off. But no, I started taking acting classes in 1990. And then in 19, um, I think it was 94, 95, when my daughter was first built, uh, born, uh, Tyler at that time, I would just read the magazine, read the books, watch the movies. I got to be cool with Spike. Spike still didn't put me in, in a movie, a, love, a basketball movie on top of it. So I just love acting and I understood character. So I decided I, when I get out of there, I'm going to be on television. At first I wanted just to be a late night talk show host, uh, like Arsenio Hall, like Johnny Carson, like Jack Parr. When Bill Cosby used to sit in for Johnny Carson, I was like, I can do this. Yeah. Uh, and I did that on BET. I, I yeah. became a late night talk show host 22 years ago, coming up yeah. this year. But yeah. that wasn't it. Sitting down and talking, you know, every single day, not my style. So what was that journey like for you? Well, basketball is entertainment and, and, yeah. and sports is the highest form of entertainment and the, the, the largest distractor from politics. Uh, I ever tell people that all the time, after September 11th, one of the first questions everybody asks is, are we going to have a World Series? Are we going to have a football season going to start? Even after what was supposedly the, the worst tragedy in American history, one of the worst tragedies, everybody was worried about what was going to happen in sports, even during the pandemic, right? Hey, how many, can they win in the bubble? So sports is the focus of all entertainment. All the actors and, and singers want to watch basketball and football. Me, on the other side, when I would be on the layup line, I would like, this Steven Spielberg. I would go introduce myself. Yeah, you know, what I love hearing and learning about that is that I know all of those things are true because one thing that really pleasantly surprised me years ago, as you know, I'm originally from Detroit, 
is that I learned that you also were an investor. You invested in Slum Village. I wanted to be on that side because when we're not playing basketball, we're watching television. Uh, when I came in the league, video games had just started. I just don't have the thumbs for that. So I wasn't into, you know, getting lost. Now I'm with my Oculus on in Web3. Uh, I started the John Sally Crypto Show. So this time I'm ahead of the game trying to help myself knowing where the future is coming into Web3 and being my own company, my own program. Like I did my own mic and, and earpiece. You know how I work it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and when you mentioned that in Detroit, yeah, I, I opened up Hoop Sound Studio in 1991. Uh, Tony Rich is uh, the most successful artist out of there. He got a Grammy uh, yeah. when he left and go down to Atlanta. And then I had Slum Village with Jay Dilla. So uh, Paul Rosenberg, who represents Eminem, I, I was I knew I had it. And I knew, I, like I said, I know that all the talent that was Motown, there has to be some residue. And I was correct. Yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. So by the time you really started to dive into this acting career, what was that like for you reading for that first role? Do you feel like you were being taken seriously? Because look, you walk in, you're a seven footer, you're a very famous athlete, and you got a couple of rings at this point. So what was that like for you? Well, my first experience was Bad Boys, and I, and I had done a commercial for Nike uh, Foot Locker, and Michael Bay was his director at the time. He was directing video. Yeah. And then I was with Martin and Will on set, but this night I was with Martin, and Martin was mad at me because I had said something to his future wife, his fiance at the time. And we were walking upstairs and I heard Michael Bay yelling and screaming. And I remember the voice. I was like, who's that screaming? He came over there. He said, hey, we got to put him in a movie. He's funny. Martin was like, you're the director. So that's how I got my first one. But the wow. second one, Ruben Cannon, one of the greatest casting directors uh, in the world, made me audition for the movie Eddie. And I read for it. And I thought I wanted to get the star role of Stacey Patton. He was like, I got a better role for you. So reading, and I tell people, I've been to mm, at least 50, uh, maybe 25 auditions. Mm. And I've only been in a certain amount of movies. So the audition process is very hard. But I love the fact that, you know, you go in there and they can see if you're going to fit. With this, with Sneakerella, mm. I was nervous about the audition. I did. I prepared as best I can. The casting agent who really helped me out had me do it three, four, five different ways and told me, okay, now I think you're ready. And then Liz, uh, the director at first, wasn't gonna hire me, she said, because I was sitting back being cool with a cigar in my hand because I thought I had to play the king. Mm -hmm. And she said she just, at first she didn't buy into it. And then she heard me say something or she heard me do the lines about my daughter and she found out, saw my relationship with my daughter and she said, you're gonna be perfect for this. So I appreciated it. This is, I, I, I want certain movies. This movie, I want it. Yeah. Um, I also auditioned for the Green Mile, but my man uh, Mike w was so much better for it. But I thought I was going to be across from Tom Hanks. I'm telling you, I knew it. Mm -hmm. I just it, just certain certain places and certain things I want to do. And I get to live out my life. I get yeah. to live. I want to be a pro basketball player. I want to be an actor, a TV host, uh, a producer, a movie producer, a movie director. There's nothing. I, I'm like Kanye. There's nothing I can't do. I Some things that. I won't do, though. I love that. Yeah, there are some things that you won't do. But you know what? I want to go back a little bit because I loved hearing about your audition process for Sneakerella. What is it that you're looking for, you know, when you started approaching your acting career? It has to not embarrass my family. It has to literally, uh, I learned this from Will Smith, one of my favorite people on the planet. And Will would say, what the character calls for. And I remember he was telling me, uh, he told that story. Uh, I don't think he told it directly to me, but he was talking about in the movie where he wasn't going to kiss somebody. He wasn't going to be do this in six degrees of separation. And he did the best to not, you know, throw it off. But he realized after that, he said it was his largest mistake because the character is not Will Smith. The character is the character. And if whatever the character does, you do in the script. So I had to learn that. I looked at Halle Berry, I remember certain people were upset with her in Monster Ball. 
they were acting like it was Halle Berry that was in Monster Ball. It wasn't. It was right. the character that Halle Berry did so very well. So taking on character has to have character for me. Uh, I pay attention to Samuel Jackson is really who I would follow in anything. He said, waiters wait, actors act. So you have to get out there and not saying it's a bad thing to be a waiter and you know, to pay the bills. But if you're an actor, put all that energy into being an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I look at things that's gonna help. So to the point now where I'm developing the own films I wanna produce. I'm looking at my friend Regina King saying, I wanna do this, I wanna produce this, I wanna be in this. So if she can do it, I can do it. And so now we're making movies, God willing, that uh, I can be proud of and put my, my, you know, pat myself on the shoulder. Like I said, yesterday I was with this young film maker in, in, in Venice, Venice Village, and they walked into Urban Vegan Kitch Kitchen on Combine, 41 Combine. Just, just for everybody that wants good vegan food, let me tell you where to go. Okay, let us know because we know you know some good vegan food. <laughs> Urban Vegan cook, uh, Kitchen was this spot and I, I, I peeped them. I pulled out my camera, took pictures of them, found out that they were in the arts. And uh, I'm wearing, represent, wearing their sweater, um, their, their sweater, their hoodie. I just really want things that don't make us as a people. We've already seen it. We've already seen you point the gun sideways. We already seen you show the worst and the lowest parts of us and you do it because you know it gets you on just like those who rap a certain way you know i'm just you know rapping my reality there ain't a reality no more son if you're selling crack right now you're whack you already whack but if you're doing the lowest things you can possibly do because you're trying to survive then you're not trying to survive mm -hmm. you're trying to be taken care of in prison that's my mentality so yeah. there's a bunch of things you can do other than selling crack and like they said there's always work at the post office. To that, you mentioned earlier that you really love seeking out filmmakers who are black women. Tell me about that. Well, this is why. I, I find, um, I was in this movie, Cinder, uh, Sneakerella, we did. Liz uh, Rosenbaum, who is the director, yeah, she, you just have a different lens, period. And, and, and nobody can change that. You have more emotion than, than males do. You have a different feeling when hugged. You see things from a certain position on this planet because for the past few centuries, uh, women have been put into a bad situation as opposed to where it used to be. And I got daughters too, so I'm starting to hear things and see things differently. I would see it one way and then hear them speak about it. And I think if you put that with a camera lens, Ava has proved it to everybody. You know, you put a camera lens on that and get them to tell a story, you can tell a better story to me. I just feel they can. And that's something that you're looking to do as a producer now, as a film producer moving forward? Yeah, I, and I like these young, hungry directors and producers and people who, you know, I get a lot of people who don't watch movies mm -hmm. and they haven't watched movies before them. They haven't watched any black and whites. They haven't watched what we consider to be the classics. And really, if you're the director, you have to you really uh, convincing people to move in a certain direction and give you what you want to give the camera so you can then cut it and that's the scene you want. That's an important thing. I, I sit around and I listen to Spike. I love Quentin Tarantino. I'm a little different than Spike when it comes to that. I like that he can tell a great story and I, I love the camera movement. It makes me feel like I'm there. You know, you can see some artists paint and you hear that they've been sitting there all day drawing lines and, and adding layers and layers of paint. And people go, man, well, what is this going to be? And when it turns out to be a masterpiece, mm. because the layers, the layers that you don't know that they put there. Yeah. You know, at what point did you feel like Hollywood as an industry was really taking you seriously? No, they never, they never get past the fact that I was an NBA player. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I, I, I used to want to, I used to say, I don't watch basketball. Don't talk to me about it, but that's not my personality. If what I've done gets me into the room, then what I can do will keep me in the room. Mm. So getting in the room is a hard thing, right? So whatever can get you to jump over all these different uh, obstacles that get you into the room and they hear what you're talking about and they believe what you can sell, yeah. th then you'll get into it. Plus, I got tired of asking. Like people 
never know how many times I was close, but no cigar. I was close, but no cigar. You don't know that. And my daughters used to just think, oh, he got it. And then my wife told him, hey, you don't know how many times he had to hear no. Yeah. And how he was like, ah, we're not going to buy it. We're not believable. Look, Dave Chappelle tells the story how HBO was like, why do we need you? I mean, they at certain times, they make you feel terrible, but hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. So I just look at it that way. Oh, that person's hurt. Too bad I can't help them out of their pain. Yeah. Um, but I take me serious. I, I sit around and I say, oh, I get into the right rooms and the right positions with folks. And if they don't take me serious, I don't take them serious. I'm figuring out a way to do something that's so large that um, I'm afraid to say it on your show, but it's so large, I'm figuring it out that uh, we can see more movies like Sneakerella with people of color in them in the positions that we hadn't seen before. Mm. And we can identify that it's not degrading and it's, it's also uplifting and it's a good thing. And the actors happen to be black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's a great thing that yeah. we also don't have to be thrown into. Like people start talking about our history and the only thing they talk about is slavery, not realizing that's a blip of our relation of our of our history, right? Mm -hmm. It's the one that they this about that big according to that much history. Yeah. So there's so many different things we are about and we just have to start showing it and being about it. Yeah. Thank you for being candid about talking about rejection that you've experienced. I think that's important for people to know. But you mentioned Green Mile and how you really wanted that. Was there another role out there that you were really hoping to get, but you didn't get for whatever reason? I, I, I told you, I got up to 295 pounds. Uh, it wasn't hard. I just was being uh, <laughs> lazy, and I'm 247 now. Wow. But uh, Michael Clark Duncan was the perfect pick for the Green Miles, but... You couldn't tell me. I sat with Rita Romano, the, uh, my acting coach at that time. Uh, you know, famous. She was on, you know, she would help me through. We did it so many different ways. I got to audition like three different times. I think they did a great job of picking Michael Clark Duncan, but there's a, there's a bunch of movies. I can't, this is the deal. I don't remember the ones I don't get. It's like, uh, like being in a nightclub. I only remember the girls that say yes. I don't remember the ones that told me to get out of their face. <laughs> I'm crying. No, I love that. I love that. Hey, that sounds like a healthy way to navigate life too. I gotta say that. I've been trying to write a book since 1989. Mm -hmm. But uh, my attitude about it changes. Like I look at things entirely. Like I'm not just laughing and smiling just because you're beautiful, Kelly. I'm, this is who I am. Yeah. And I I don't see any day as, you know, my birthday is coming up on May 16th. And they go, what are you going to do for your birthday? I said, well, I was only born one day. I only have one birthday. You mean the repeat? Yeah, I, I don't know. Probably do another TV show. VH1 is coming out with a new show. Like I, all kind of all kind of things. I just keep it moving. So I don't have time to stop and write about what I've already done. Because one, I forgot a lot of it. Um, I started smoking cannabis <laughs> in 2000. So a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of my memory happens to not be there. And a lot of it, I would say, was trauma. But I built on top of it. And then in 2009, I did a show called I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. And I was in Costa Rica. And I got to sit in the river. I had the water beating against my back. And it was raining. So I got to cry. I got to forgive myself. I got to forgive those who trespass against me. And since then, all the, I would say the negative things or crazy things, I forgot. So yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna write them. Look, you have played with several Hall of Famers and a couple of them have documented their playing games like Dennis Rodman and Michael Jordan. But you were also the first player in NBA history to win a ring with three different teams. Have you ever thought about telling your story in that way that we've seen Rodman's story and Jordan's story play out? Well, this, this story was so under scrutiny and under the camera eye. My story isn't. And I, I was in both of those documentaries. Matter of yeah. fact, Michael was like, make sure you talk to Sal because he knows I remember everything. Because I tell people there's no time better than the now. 
So my hobby is photography. So I will document as much as I can with a camera. I still act like I got a, a camera here. Um, but my story is, you've seen it before, it's Forrest Gump, but that's the mentality. I, I just keep running and sugar, honey, iced tea happens. I just keep running. I never stop running and, and I understand my path. What that is, is I have people, my mother lived to 96. My uncle Jervy right now is 92, 93. My aunt is 98. My grandmother lived to 118. So I have it, the, the genes in my family to live a long life. Yeah. So my veganism and my, uh, <clears throat> my joy for life, hopefully I get to 122 years old. And I think my story is constant. I loved hearing you say that you never stop running. So what's next for you? What are you running towards next? John Sally Crypto Show. Um, since the Web3 and this this metaverse, uh, I reserved the word uh, metaverse Kemet. Uh, and Kemet means black land for those who didn't know. So the metaverse of the black land, I'm literally am recreating Wakanda. The reason I put it that way, because that's how people's brains work, right? You got to give them a subject. And what I mean by that is when we first watched Black Panther and it looked like whatever, and then you open up Wakanda and you see it was this modern city and all that. Literally the designers, I said, make it something that doesn't look like anything else, but you're going to always want to be there. And um, in Web3, the consumer can come directly to you. And I think I have enough consumers that seen me on enough things to say, hey, I may give it a, I may give it a shot. So yeah. the John Sally Crypto Show, and then I'm putting out my, the cannabis show with my daughter and I, Deuces 22. And I just take on a bunch of um, films that you usually would not see in the theater because they have a lot of people that look like me and they still are caught between um, whether black films sell or films with black actors, so times are changing. Times yeah. are changing. The racism is fading out of uh, as much as modern day, um, as modern day as, as possible. It, every year it gets less and less and less. Racism is always gonna be here, but the diversity and being able to see people is, is changing. You know, every commercial you see now has a black person in it. Yeah. But I noticed it because I was born in the 60s and I remember never seeing it. But when you saw it, you were like, wow, wow. Now every commercial. And I I adore that. So the fact that we are now being on in front of the camera, it, it, it's it's a it's a I guess it's a the path I'm running for is to make sure it stays that way. Yeah. John Sally, he never looks back, always looks forward. And he always does it with a smile. It was so great talking to you today, John. Thank you so much for doing this. I love your Motor City stuff. Thank you, John. Continued success.